Hi, my name is Doug Schneider. Welcome to Real Hi-Fi. Today, I'm going to tackle the elephant in the room as far as Hi-Fi components go these days, the audiophile grade network switch. Is it a bunch of BS? Well, I'm going to tackle it from a different angle. Over the last couple months, I've gleaned how I found that audiophiles think network switches improve the sound. And I'm going to tell you about that and give you some of my thoughts. So first, what is a network switch? Well, in the simplest terms, it's a piece of hardware that goes on a network that simply receives and forwards data through packet switching. They're ubiquitous in our world because of the internet, a global, humongous, interconnected network. So data goes in, data goes out. Can they improve the sound? That's one of the controversies. Another controversy is how much they cost. Audio file grade network switches cost hundreds to many thousands of dollars. A lot of money for something that passes data. So here are the three ways audio files think they improve the sound. One way cited is jitter reduction or improved timing of the signal. And this is one point I'm going to shut down right now because the whole jitter argument at this point in the signal chain doesn't matter one bit. It's irrelevant, and there are a few reasons why. And the main reason it doesn't matter is there is no embedded music clock being passed around at that point. This is packeted data traveling over a network, and by packets, it has music data plus a whole bunch of other data, and these packets when they're sent and received, may or may not arrive in the same order. But on the receiving portion, they can be reassembled into the correct order. But the key is here, when they're reassembled, there's no timing information to speak of. The only thing that matters is, did it get there or not? Not, did it get there in the correct bit time? That is complete nonsense. But that doesn't stop this myth from going around. But now that you know this, you can tell whoever is saying that, no, that's not true. Or you can send them to this point in the video where I'll tell them you have no idea what you're talking about. Go read up or watch a YouTube video on how packeted data transfers work. With that ridiculous reason out of the way, I'll address the other two reasons which have to do with noise and are perhaps more plausible. One of the noise issues has to do with the cheap power supplies that come with these inexpensive computer store network switches. The thinking is that these cheap power supplies are polluting the power line and therefore affecting the other components in the system. I can't say whether this is or is not true. I can't debunk it, but there are a couple problems with the thinking. One is that a cheap little power supply on the switch isn't the only cheap little power supply in your household. They're all over your household. But more important, if the noise from this cheap little power supply is affecting the other components in your system, well, maybe they have inferior power supplies that can't deal with line anomalies. And that's possible. There are poorly designed components. There's also something else that can be done, and it's what we used to do when we installed networks in large companies, and that was put everything on dedicated circuits. So you could create a dedicated circuit just for your little network switch. doesn't cost that much to create a dedicated circuit. Or, of course, and I recommend this, put your audio equipment on a dedicated circuit and then keep this switch off it. But more important, I've never seen this type of data presented by a manufacturer, and that's a problem. By that I mean the manufacturer should show, if that's how this network switch is improving the sound, objective data on the noise performance. Like I said, it's a problem. The other noise issue as a reason has to do with noise traveling along the Ethernet cable that connects, say, a network switch to a computer, a music server, which is really a computer, or right from the network switch and into a DAC with a network input or a disc player with a network input. This, I guess, seems plausible because you are electrically connecting two things together, the switch to whatever. And 
if there's noise coming off that switch that the component is plugged into can't handle, well, maybe it causes an issue. However, there are a couple faults with this thinking. We have taken a DAC with a network connection, plugged the network connection in, ran tests on it, and found no increase in noise and distortion from the DAC itself. In other words, any noise on that line wasn't coming through. And there's another thing. Let's say now you have the network switched, hooked not directly into a DAC or disc player with a network input, but rather there's a music server, which is really a computer or a real standalone computer in the middle. So you got the network switch, you got this thing in the middle, then you got the decoding device. Have you ever looked inside a computer or a music server and seen the circuitry in there? If someone thinks that this noise-inducing network switch is going to have noise that travels through all that circuitry and then comes out the other end to affect the DAC, they're dreaming in Technicolor. Something this far removed from all this that happens in the middle can't possibly have an effect. But this idea of noise transferring from one component to another when they're electrically connected, I think should be taken seriously. Maybe our test with that DAC was just a one-off and that's a really well-designed DAC that isn't affected. And I'd be remiss not to mention that I came across this work done by a publication in Holland where they measured the noise of various network switches and found that the noise varies, maybe to a wide degree. To me, this wasn't really shocking, mind you, because when you measure electrical components, there is noise. And I put it on social media that I found something in what they did disappointing, unless I missed something. And someone from there, or who really believed in this data, really took offense to it. And that was that they unfortunately didn't close the loop on it. And by... That I mean, they measured the noise coming out of these network switches, but they didn't measure the end result after conversion to analog. Did this noise actually affect the very end of that part of the chain? And that's really the key to close that loop. And that is really the crux of this problem. Why this is such an elephant in the room. The timing thing is BS. But noise, if that's really an issue, why hasn't any switch manufacturer shown the noise performance of their switch relative to other things, even a cheap switch, and how that not only stands on its own, but affects components it's plugged into? Imagine that. Closing that portion of the loop. Here is how this little switch that looks like voodoo right now actually does objectively and subjectively perhaps improve the performance. Why hasn't anyone done that? Right now, the fact that no one has that I know of, it's a problem. And that is why I think this has become the elephant in the room. Prove the damn things work. Prove how. I'm not talking about me or you may be watching, but a manufacturer watching. Prove it. Did you really design it? This is something I'll touch on in a moment. But if you really designed it, then you're going after certain parameters to improve the performance. Then prove that your improvements work. And also tell us what those improvements are. These are electrical connections. No voodoo. No magic. No, oh, just trust your ears and listen to it. Doesn't it sound nice? No. Tell us objectively what you are doing so we have something to stand on. Because about the whole trust your ears thing, you can play the same song, identical, back to back, on the same system. So I'm talking nothing changed. And you can make people believe they heard a difference. But of course, listening is what matters the most. Even if something does or doesn't show up on the test bench, can you hear it? But maybe I've missed it and 
If I have, please put it in the comments section below. But I've never seen a credible listening test done. Something that authentically shows that someone can reliably hear the difference between this network switch or another, or no network switch. For example, it'd be quite easy to set up. Run a straight line from a router into a DAC with an ethernet connection, and then run the line into a switch and into that same DAC. You're inserting the switch that supposedly improves the sound. Show that you can reliably pick out which is which. And it's not up to me to do it. It's up to the ones making the claim. And I've never seen that done. Why not? Which brings me to a point that some will see as incredibly cynical, but you can't overlook it if you have any degree of computer knowledge. Like I said, I used to work in the industry and I built computers back when. What does build a computer mean though? It means assembling parts. Network switches, they're not something you wire up the circuit board at home with. They are designed by engineering teams from large corporations. So what are you getting in an audiophile gray network switch? Again, dreaming in technicolor, thinking that someone is in some lab creating their own circuit board? Well, I'm willing to bet that the core parts in every audiophile grade network switch come from some cheap switch at the computer store. Did they tweak it a little? Maybe. Change the power supply? Probably. But design it? So you can take from that that I'm really skeptical that anyone who's selling a network switch has actually designed the network switch. I mean, really designed it. But no matter, I haven't, believe it or not, closed the door on these network switches. I could see some manufacturers looking at this and saying, no way we're sending a switch to soundstage. These guys are like, no, no, no. Just show that it works. We've always been about the objective and the subjective. Subjective, if you notice, always comes first in our reviews. Just prove that it does something. And I'm not making this for the manufacturers to be happy about. I'm making it for the consumers to give you my thoughts on the situation. Because some of these switches, they're pretty expensive. And to me, they should be justified. I hope this helped. Thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.